Once we understand Faraday's law, we gain access to a whole bunch of technologies for generating and manipulating electricity. One of these is the transformer, whose job it is to take an AC signal of a particular voltage and either step that voltage up or step it down. Let's suppose we have two solenoids, each wrapped around an iron core so that whatever magnetic field one makes, the other feels. The solenoids might have different numbers of coils. Let's say the input solenoid has N1 coils and the output has N2. We'll feed some EMF E1 into the first coil. That'll make some magnetic field B, which the second coil will also experience. If the solenoids have the same cross-sectional area, then the flux through one turn of the first coil will be the same as the flux through one turn of the second coil. The time derivatives of those fluxes will also be the same. Now, using Faraday's law, the total EMF in the first solenoid will be equal to the time derivative of the flux through one coil times the number of coils. And the same thing will be true for the total EMF in the second solenoid. And so we can relate the output coil EMF, E2, to the input coil EMF. It involves the ratio of the number of coils in a pretty clean fashion. So now we have a recipe for taking some input voltage and stepping it up or down into whatever output voltage we like best, which has a whole bunch of applications that we'll discuss shortly. First though, note that all of that only worked because we're using AC. A transformer depends on there being a time-varying flux in these coils, which requires a time-varying current. If you were to hook a transformer up to a DC source, like a battery, you'd get a whole lot of nothing. Transformers are mostly used to help get electrical power from place to place. A power plant generates some power at some voltage, let's say 120 volts, just for the sake of argument. We then have to take that power and transmit it a long distance to get it to your house. As it turns out, pushing lots of current through power lines is super lossy. Power dissipation goes like I squared R, so we use a transformer to step that voltage up to something bigger, maybe as much as 500 kilovolts. In the process, since the total power has to be conserved, current goes way down, and therefore so does the loss. We then push that signal through high voltage power lines until it gets near your house, at which point we start stepping the voltage down. Often this is done in multiple stages, with one substation bringing the voltage down part of the way, and then a transformer right near your house bringing it down to your household voltage. In this fashion we can deliver power efficiently, while keeping the especially high voltages mostly away from people. Oh, and there is one other application of transformers. Since we can daisy chain them together to reach voltages up into the millions, we could use them to generate really long sparks, like those in a Tesla coil, which, for the most part, is just a couple of transformers, one after the other. Usually in the process of stepping the voltage up, we step the current down so far that the sparks probably won't kill you. Probably. <laughs>